اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مسٹر جبریل وٹ از دا ریشو بٹوین دا سنس شیئر اینڈ دا ڈاٹر شیئر ان دا انہیریٹنس موسیقی Okay, good. Yes, sir. So you said um, it's a ratio of two to one between the son and the daughter. Okay, good. Do you have any children? Yes, sir. How many? I have uh, five, alhamdulillah. Okay, how many sons, how many daughters? One son, four daughters. Okay, one son. Let's suppose the son is A and the daughter no. is X, Y, Z, W. So X, Y, Z, W, these four are your daughters and no. A is your son. Any idea how much is your total uh, inheritance? Yeah, for daughters, um, it's two thirds. No, let's suppose you have total wealth of around $1,000, okay? No, $1,000. Now you have died and we need to divide this $1,000 among these four daughters and one son. So first, the ratio is 2, ratio 1, two. ratio 1, one. ratio 1, Nam. ratio 1. one. Nam. So now we need to calculate it. 2 plus 1 plus 1, 4, 5, 6. So their sum is 6. So now I will calculate the share of A. A is equal to 2 divided by 6 multiply 1000. 1000 is your total wealth. Okay. So I will divide it. 2000 divided by 6. So what is the answer here? Can you tell me? We have one, we have three, three hundred. Okay, three hundred. Sorry, thirty. Let me yeah, check. 30. Two divided by six, two, two, six multiply one thousand. Three hundred thirty-three. The correct answer is? Yeah, three hundred thirty-three. And it is in point as well, so I will not go in points. So the yeah. sun will get around three hundred thirty-three dollars from your inheritance okay now let's see what is the share of the daughters one divided by six multiply one thousand what happened to the one word i lost everything okay so one let me refer this page So now we will calculate that daughter's share. So one divided by six multiply one thousand. Okay. So now one sixty six. Sorry. A one sixty six. Okay, one sixty six. So each daughter daughter will get one sixty six dollars after your death okay so in this way we will calculate the inheritance 666 plus 333 will be 999 yes so this is the general method that you will use to calculate it Next question. What about the inheritance of those who have only daughters? Mr. Sair, what is the answer for this? 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is my first time I have joined this class. Okay. So, this is my first time. Okay, if this is your first time, then you need to know one thing. In this class, uh, whatever we study in the class, the student write it on their notebooks. And in the okay. next class, I ask them about the answers. Okay. So, okay. I hope you do you have a notebook today? Yeah. Okay, good. So you will need it. Mr. Jibreel, what about the inheritance of those who have only daughters? They will get they equal care, I think. They get two-thirds of the inheritance. Yes, the daughters will get two-thirds of the inheritance. And what about the inheritance of those who have all, who has only one daughter? You will get half of the inheritance. Okay. And will the parents of the deceased who has children, let's suppose in your case, you have five children. After your yeah. death, will your parents get any share in the inheritance? Yes, they will. They will how much? One sixth. One sixth of the inheritance. Now let's go. There, there is another person who has no children. He is without any children. What about his parents? What will they get in the inheritance? One third. One, One third. third. And what is the most important condition that we need to fulfill before dividing your inheritance after your death? We have to pay all legacies and debts. Yes. First, we will pay the debt and legacies. After that, we will divide your inheritance among your uh, wife, yes. parents, and children. Can uh, Sheikh, Sheikh, can I ask a question? Sorry? Uh, can I ask a question, Sheikh? Yes, please. Uh, if uh, someone don't have any kids and he dies, uh, so how will be this uh, uh, inheritance? shared then okay a person who has no children the answer yeah. for question number five gives you some answer for that half answer okay the answer of the five is the half answer mm -hmm. of your question we will study it yeah. because in this uh, only parents are discussed but what about the wife and other yeah, exactly. See, see, yeah, study it in the next brothers week. and siblings. Okay. Next. Can do siblings and brother brother have any right? We will study that as well, inshallah. Okay, we have not okay. covered that topic yet. Inshallah. Can a person give one of the inheritors more share in the inheritance because of the likeness or dislikeness? Mr. Jibreel? Let's put, no, Allah has, uh, Allah has already ordained the distribution of inheritance, so we cannot tamper with it. Let's suppose you like your uh, daughter W and you like your son A very much, but you don't like the daughter X, Y, Z much. So still cannot you give them anything extra? No. Okay. So your likeness and dislikeness uh, you will not do it does not mean anything no. yes sir. The, the, the inheritance okay good so we will not make any changes in the law of inheritance Auzu billahi minash shaitani rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim Mr Said read the number 12 Can you hear me
Do you see the screen? Yeah, but uh, font is not clear. Okay, maybe this is because of the internet issue. Mr. Jibreel, can you read it? Yes, sir. Okay, read. In that which your wives live, your share is a half. If they have no child, but if they leave a child, you get a fourth of that which they leave after payment of legacies that they may have bequinted or debts. In that which you leave. Okay, we need to pause here. So here again, the first thing that we need to do is to pay the legacies and pay the debts. After that, so here we will write a question. What will you get from the inheritance of your wife if you have children from home? With or whatever you feel. Okay, whatever you what will you get from the inheritance of your wife if you have children from her with her? So in your case, you have five children with your wife. So after her death, what will you get? You will get fourth, A fourth. Of the inheritance. So the answer is I will get or Mr. Jibril will get. And Mr. Jibril, you will write the answer. I will get one fourth of the inheritance, I will get one fourth of the inheritance. So, Mr. Sail, yes, you tell me what will Mr. Jubril will get from the inheritance of his wife after the death of his wife. If he's having kids from her, then yeah. he will get only one fourth. Okay. So since Mr. Jubilee has five children, so this means after the death of wife, he will get one fourth of the inheritance. Now we will see the other man who does not have any child. So here we will write another question. What will a man get from the inheritance of his wife if he does not have any children from her? What will a man get from the inheritance of his wife if he, if he does not have any children from her? then the man will get half of the inheritance. The answer is the man will get half of the 
inheritance. Mr. Jibril, what will a man get from the inheritance of his wife if he does not have any children from her? You will get half of the inheritance. Okay. Rema remaining, uh, how it's supposed to be uh, distributed then? Okay, we will, then we will uh, follow the other rules and that we study in the case of parents, in the case of children, we will apply that rule as well along this one, okay? So a uh, wife's uh, property will be distributed then to uh, her uh, parents, with her yeah. parents and- Yes, okay. just like in the last class, we studied the rule about parents, what will parents get? So same rule will be applied here as well, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. We will study it in more detail here. Okay, so Mr. Syed, do you see the screen now? Yeah. Okay, read from here. In that which you leave. In that which you leave, there your wife's share is a fourth if you leave no child. But if you leave a child, they get an eighth of that which you leave after payment of legacies. That you may have Bequeathed or debts if okay. the man or woman we will take a part goes... here, okay? Okay, so this thing completes here. Mr. Said, do you have a wife? Yeah, I have a wife. Okay, mashallah. So, in dad, would you leave the, uh, your wife is she is fourth if you have no child, but if you leave a child, they get one eight of the child. Do you have any children? No, I don't have any. Okay, may Allah give you children, I mean. So, now we will write this question. What will your wife will get from the inheritance what will your wife will get from the inheritance if you have no children from her if you have what will your wife get from the inheritance if you have no children? So in your case, you don't have any children. So what will your wife get after your death? So the answer is written here. Your wife will get one fourth of the inheritance. Your wife will get one fourth of the inheritance mr galaxy can you hear us mr galaxy is not available mr jubril no. so what will the wife of sair will get from the inheritance after the death of Mr. Said. She'll get one fourth. Okay, she will get one fourth of the inheritance. Okay. Now, other person who has children. What will your wife get from the inheritance if you have children from her. So, Mr. Said, you will tell me what will the wife of Jubil will get from the inheritance because they have five children. So, what will she get? One eight. So, here we will write the answer. She will get one eighth of the inheritance. Okay. She will get one 
of the inheritance and again the most important thing is the payment of legacies and the debts first we will pay the legacies and debts after that we will divide the inheritance between the wife children parents okay next thing mr jubilee read this no sorry sir uh, okay if if the man or woman whose inheritance is in question has left neither ascendant nor descendant but has left but has left a brother or a sister each one of the two get a sixth but if more than two they share in a third after payment of legacies he or she may have bequented or debt so that no loss is caused to anyone this is a commandment from allah and allah is ever all knowing most forbearing so now we have a person who does not has any children does not has any wife does not have any parents everyone has already maybe died or maybe he does not has anyone he's in that situation so he has left maybe one brother or a sister so they will get one sixth of the inheritance but if the brothers and sisters are more than two then they will uh, get they share uh, in a third so then the one third of the property will be divided among them okay shall we write this question or not this is a rare thing what do you suggest so sorry i didn't get that sir shall we write this question or shall we skip it i think we should write it sir okay what <clears throat> about the inheritance of the person who neither has any ascendants nor any descendants what about the inheritance of a person who neither has any ascendants nor any descendants so the answer is if he has two brother or sister or maybe a brother or a sister then each one will get one sixth the answer is if he has two siblings if he has two siblings then each then each will get one sixth of the inheritance listen the answer again if he has 
two siblings, then each will get one sixth of the inheritance. But if he has more than two siblings, but if he has more than two siblings, then they will have equal share in one third of the inheritance. Then they will have a equal share in one third of the inheritance. So second part again, but if he has more than two siblings, then each will get equal share in one third of the inheritance. Mr. Sai, what is the answer for this question? Uh, uh, if he has uh, two brothers or uh, one brother and one sister, then each one will get one sixth. If they have uh, more than uh, two siblings, then they will get uh, equally uh, one third in the inheritance. Okay, good. So again, Allah is saying this is a commandment from Allah, which means we cannot make any changes to it because on our likeness or dislikeness. Often there are issues between brothers and sisters. This is a very common thing these days. So you cannot make any change to this law of inheritance because of your likeness or dislikeness. Mr. Sair. Read this. These are the limits set by Allah or, or, or ordinance as regards laws of inheritance and whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger وسلم, will be admitted to gardens under which rivers flow in paradise abide therein and that will be the great suffering. So first Allah told us that this is a command from Allah, which means we cannot make any change. Then Allah again tell us that these are the limits set by Allah Almighty and whoever will follow these limits and obeys Allah and his messenger, they will be admitted to the gardens of the rivers where they will stay forever inshallah and that is the real success. Okay. Mr. Jibri, read the next one. No. And whoever obey and whoever disobey Allah and his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and transgresses his limits, he will cast him into the fire for abide daring, and he shall have a disgraceful torment. So again, this is a warning for those who disobey Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and transgress. So they will be put in the fire and they will stay there and they will have a disgraceful torment. May Allah protect us all from such punishment. Amen. Inshallah, we all will follow the law of Allah Almighty and we will obey Allah and His Messenger. Inshallah. Mr. Sai, read this 15. Bismillah. And those of your women who commit illegal sexual intercourse take the evidence of four witness from among us, you against them, and if they testify, confine them, that is, women, to houses until death comes to them, or Allah ordains for, for them some or other. Read this footnote as well.
read this footnote. Uh, the provision of this verse has been abrogated by the verse of Surah An-Nu, ordaining lashing for the unmarried and stoning to death for the married when the four witnesses four witnesses testified to the crime. So in, in the initial uh, days of Islam, this was the punishment for adultery. But later, this punishment changed and now we will study what is the punishment of adultery. What is the punishment? Punishment of adultery. under Islamic law. What is the punishment of adultery under Islamic law? The answer is for married man or woman, the punishment is stoning to death for married man or woman, the punishment is stoning to death. For unmarried man or woman, the punishment is uh, I am not sure whether it was 100 lashes or 80 lashes. So at the moment, we will just write 80 lashes, okay? But you need to remember one thing I am not sure whether it was 80 or whether it was 100. I am not uh, exactly remembering that. Okay, so we'll just write 80 at the moment. For unmarried men or women, the punishment is and 80 lashes. Let me check. I forgot the number actually. How many lashes for adultery in Islam? 100 lashes. I forgot. So the answer is 100 lashes. The punishment the <clears throat> for unmarried man or woman, the punishment is 100 lashes. Mr. Jubil, what is the punishment no. of adultery under Islamic law? For married men and women stoning to death. For married men and women, 100 lashes. Okay, now we have a practical question. Today we often see that many people commit adultery. Sometimes a son commit adultery, sometimes a daughter commit adultery, sometimes husband commit adultery, sometimes wife commit adultery. So can we enforce this punishment ourselves, okay? Let's suppose a person enters the house and he see that his wife is committing adultery with another man. Can he enforce this punishment on her and her lover? The answer is absolutely not. Okay. Yes. The answer is absolutely not. Only Islamic court can give this punishment. The answer is no. Only Islamic court can give this punishment. 
Mr. Sair, can anyone yes, enforce this punishment of adultery? No, he can't. Only uh, if uh, only by Islamic court it can be. Uh, they they can <clears throat> get uh, punishment. Now the problem is this: almost all of us are or majority of us are living in societies where there is no Islamic law. So this means if a wife, if a son, if a daughter, or if a husband commit adultery, we don't have any option of going to Islamic court. Then what shall we do? So here we write another question. <clears throat> what shall we do if we are living in a society where there are no Islamic courts. What shall we do if we are living in a society where there are no Islamic courts? The answer is in that case, if it is your wife, then you will divorce her. Same thing for your husband. If it is your husband, to leave him. If you are, it is son or daughter, try to put them in a nikah. We still cannot, can't force this law, okay? So the simple answer is no, we cannot uh, force this law ourselves. We will just leave them. We will just leave them. Okay. Now you all send me the answers for these questions on my WhatsApp number. Okay. You have already my WhatsApp number in the group. Send me your answers there. Okay, Jibril and Sahib. Right, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Our time is about to end. So we will leave, I will stop the class here. If you have any question, you can ask me. The answers are fine by me, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Alhamdulillah. Send me the answers on my WhatsApp, Arya. All right.